That is also one thing about this Dragon Song Ultimate. The law. The way they tell this Dragon Song War, and then the way they retell another Dragon Song War. For a guy that doesn't give a shit about story, when I do this Dragon Song Ultimate, I want to go back to Heaven's World. The other day, I actually spent one hour offline reading Wiki. Yeah, I read. Because I care! I was very touched by this ultimate that I went to read the law! I'm so proud cool. of myself. Okay, this face fucking blew my mind. I went back to watch a lot of reactions for this face. I'm pretty sure I'm the only guy that got my mind fucking blown when I see this face. Wait, let me see whether... Do I have a reaction? Okay, 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 My mind was blown. I legit... I legit... I, I, I was like... What the fuck? Oh, oh, oh. 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 I was really shocked. I mean, you guys' mind were also. Bl I look, look at the chat. 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 Holy fuck, man! Deal. I think this this blew everybody's mind. I think it it blew my fucking mind. I like Zefla reaction when Zefla first saw that. Zefla was going crazy as well. Fuck, man. That that has to be one of the best moments. Show us. Fuck. Shit. Where was it? Ah, later. We'll find it later. Happy history. I'm not gonna show you my history. I'm not gonna get debated. I can't show you my history. What am I stupid? You think I'm stupid? I'm not gonna show you my tab history. Okay. As much as phrases were sung, as much as we suck Mr. Osma dig enough, I am a little bit disappointed that they didn't require us to bring this guy HP down to zero. Because there's no DPS check here. This is strictly a fan service. This phase is strictly just a preliminary to introduce you to the second half of the fight. Okay, okay. Before we go into the next phase, this is the part where I need to talk about plugin. This is the part where the plugin and the third party program comes in. My static didn't want to do the tank LB. Even though tank LB clearly was making him take less damage. Nobody knew, right? Nobody knew back then that you use it the moment he start running, right? Most of us use it when his health bar appear, right? So when the health bar appear, we use the tank LB, he take less damage, but it was still inevitably he died because he can't get healed and Charizard will use Pure of Heart at that point and at that point the spear will kill him regardless of whether you got him. Full LB effect, the whole duration, right? So we were like, fuck, something's missing. So I obviously had the information tank to you guys that you guys got information from both rings the ring banana and uh, ring karigani right you guys got information from them you guys pasted in chat and then you guys were talking about how you know ring banana found out that there was a debuff that is appeared different if you use the lb earlier on him rather than later so if you use it later he only take less damage but you he, he can't be healed if you use it earlier not only he get the lb effect that he takes less damage but he also get a different debuff that he can be healed so i present the information to my static my static member was very concerned they were telling me are you sure you can show this information on stream are you sure we can use this information my jp static was very very concerned about using third party information, let alone third party tools. This is the part where after the TOS talk recently, it came to my attention that JP's really anal about third party stuff, huh? They don't want to use third party information. They don't want to use third party tools. They don't even want to know how you get third party information. So my JP static was very concerned. My JP static is, okay, listen, even if this works, we are not going to use it. We're going to try our way first. Let's try using Hewlett LB, which I agree, which I agree. At that point, I agree. We should try Hewlett LB because the community already tried Tank LB. It didn't fully work and also nobody tried it yet. It was just on locks that the debuff was different. Nobody tried it yet. Nobody really like tried to heal him after that because everybody was at the same prop point, right? Consistently getting that was very difficult, right? So then we had a middle ground. We say, okay, we just try what we try. We try the healer LB. If the healer LB doesn't work, then since these people got this information, obviously Rin Banana and obviously Rin Karigani is gonna try the tank LB again. And then we will have an official footage from their stream that they use the tank LB early and then Hoshifan is healable. Then we will use that information. But even if I already present them the proof and information, they refuse to use it. Not because they don't trust you. Not because they don't trust Rin. Not because they don't trust the information that I have. Just because the JPs do not want to use third party information. They don't mind it if people tested it. They do not want to use an unknown information and try it based on that. I respect that. I respect that. But at the same time, I obviously feel it's fucking stupid. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't mind trying the healer LB. It's fucking stupid. I know it's fucking stupid. I agree. As a filthy guy, Jin, I agree. But I can, I, I see where they come from now. That was the third party talk I want to talk about. That happenedly, coincidentally happened during this Hoshifan 
uh, moment. They actually also tell me, right, don't use any... That, okay, that's why that's why you notice a lot of my runs do not have a particular plugin. This is probably the cleanest timeline in the history of this channel that Arthur's ever proc. This is the cleanest. So clean. Look at my UI. Clean. Legitimate player. Look at that. Clean POV. This, this VOD is bringing me to the media tour, right, guys? <laughs> this is my resume. They even tell me don't PvP on NA. Don't PvP on NA one week before Ultimate. We don't want you to get banned because you've been yelling on stream too much. I saw your PvP stream. You've been streaming 15, 16 hours. You've been quite toxic on, 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 on NA PvP. So don't stream NA PvP for one week. They don't risk the slightest percentage. Okay, now this purple Torden face, I think it's too easy. It's easy in a way that it's free pro. This first trio, if you compare it to the first trio in normal Torden and the Meteor face, and you compare it to Astinian, this this trio is free. If you have slightly basic understanding, you literally can go past this trio with a lot of deaths and you can recover. If you have a red mage, this is the part where I think if you have a red mage, it's super good for prop. This is the only phase that actually gives you room for recovery. All you need is four person to be alive. One tank, one healer, one rezzer, and you hope that the thunder doesn't kill the party. That's that's the only thing about this phase. Now, when you are progging, DPS don't matter. You can have four deaths, you can have five deaths. If the correct person is alive, you can literally recover this phase and learn the next phase. But of course, if you include the DPS check, then this phase needs to be done properly, obviously. If you got two deaths here, you might have trouble with uh, Meteor number one, and then number two, you might have trouble because the two mini is coming up right here. You might have trouble with uh, bringing Torden down enough to 2%. But for proc, doesn't matter. That's why this phase is uh, this phase is very easy to proc. This phase is very easy to proc. What is this trio called again? Wrath of the Heaven? Nobody ever talk about progging Wrath of the Heaven. If you are progging Wrath of the Heaven, you are progging Death of the Heaven. It's buy one, get one free. Definitely the weakest trio. Okay, Death of the Heaven. This is checkpoint two. This is not a very difficult mechanic, but just like every other ultimate, this mechanic happened at the worst time, on the ninth minute. I don't know what is with them with the ninth minute. Every ultimate ninth minute is the hardest mechanic. The time that you truly get stuck for a while. Dude, this mechanic is so overwhelming at the beginning. Luckily, just like every other overwhelming mechanic, the more overwhelmed it is, the easier it is to break down. But it is hard, hard to get footage. But it's very easy to break down. You got one dive here, you got one dive there, you got a spear here, your safe spot is limited. If your safe spot is limited, you can only squeeze this amount of people in specific spot based on, say, debuff then you know exactly how to formulate where you put your part of. Now, there's many different ways to do this. I don't want to say that which is a good way, which is a bad way. There's only one way. You have to put your paddles properly in the correct spot so that by the time you have to resolve your PlayStation data, the people can get knocked back safely into a spot that allows them to take paddles. That's it. That's the mechanic. Some would say the best way to put this paddle is like this. Some would say putting the paddle in the X is okay. Some would say putting paddle three here and one there is okay because no logically speaking, two of the circle is always going to get death centered. So it makes sense that circle and circle must be opposite. That's why the paddle must be opposite. And then these two is single because one of the square and one of the triangle will get it. And then you, you, you keep one lane safe because two axes don't get. Yes, you can do that. You can also do a cross. It's totally fine. I think you can also do a cross. My point is, it doesn't matter how you put the paddle. You can only put paddles at specific spots. A lot of people think that this is risky. This is risky. I agree. I shouldn't be here. I should be there. It doesn't fucking matter where I am because I don't drop a key mechanic, which is the paddle, which these three person, four person are already doing so. Now, again, because the mechanic is overwhelming, you have limited safe spot. These six markers are the only safe. And for this middle marker, you have a triangle safe spot. You can technically fit two person here. Same, that you can fit. Like, like it's mirror. You fit two person here, you can fit two person here. I should actually be maybe here. As long as my thunder don't hit people, it doesn't matter. I can go anywhere I want. Most group would put people here. When we first time proc this, we only thought that here and this triangle was a safe spot. Because like I said, the very early beginning, the first trio, they introduced the triangle safe spot, make us believe that they want us to repeat that. That's why we think, shit, it's exactly the same as phase one. That's why our very beginning strat, evolving one guy here, three guys here, one guy here, three guys here. We didn't know that this was a safe spot. We didn't know this two was a safe spot. So we were already used to this dodging pattern. We already knew that the moment this thing appear, is when you move. 
You don't move anything before. You only move when this thing appear. Because if you do, the twister will always be on where you were. The timing. When you see the effect, the twister is where you stand. So we already practiced this already. We already know that if we have to go right, we go between. We have to go left, we go between. All of us knew it already. So this for us was not risky. Is this a good strat? Fuck no. Am I going to do this again in any other reprog group? Fuck no. But for us, this worked because luckily for us, our original strat already used this. But for other people, this would be very monga. This would be like... I have to dodge Earthquake between two twister. Like, what the fuck? That is scary. When you first do this mechanic, this mechanic was very, very difficult. Identify the safe spot. Identify the timing. Identify this fucking Earthquake. Remember what I said just now earlier? This Earthquake is the biggest troll in this whole ultimate. Feeling this Earthquake the very first time is hard, man. But once you get it, it feels very satisfying. This whole ultimate up to this point is like you call. If you've done it before, you will never forget. It will only get easier and easier. And unlike T, where people do different movement for Nisi, where everybody does a different wormhole shred and you have to reprog a lot despite these positionings that you can change the philosophy of this mechanic doesn't change you only got three safe spots and you have to fit eight people in you have to put the puddle in a specific order to satisfy your next way of doing your playstation tether as long as you know how to do this mechanic the only thing you adjust is how your next group want to and where they want you to put the puddle none of this change this thing explodes twister appears this thing doesn't change in any single static the only difference is where you stand so this is a very hard mechanic to figure out the first time this is a very hard mechanic to formulate but one this is a mechanic that once you learn, like Yukov, you can do it in any group. No problem. I think this is the one ultimate, like Yukov, that if your static disband halfway, you can easily join another group. Oh, the PlayStation data. <laughs> Oof, let me tell you, this one is... This five seconds here is the hardest five seconds in this whole fight. Now, now, today is a lot easier because you know that you can bait one circle. You can bait one act. It makes it a lot easier. But understanding the mechanic is one thing. People actually knowing how to get knocked back to their markers properly is another. This one is a mechanic that you understand it but you need at least 10 pulls to feel it not to mention different people adjust differently to the eye some people adjust to the eye in one tap one w tap done some people wants to find the perfect position the one degree will make you get not to a wrong direction and then you just kill somebody else with the fire and then when you got two people who are not used to it yet those two people will convert if you got one people who knows what he's doing and one person who don't you can kind of do an adjustment you know you get knocked back slightly off and then you move a little bit adjust but if you got two people who are not perfect you got two people knocked back closer they just can't adjust so this is a very easy mechanic and luckily because you can bait the x and circle now then it becomes a lot easier for you to do this mechanic a lot easier for you to do this mechanic but you still have to spend a lot of time nine minutes and attempt to get yourself comfortable with this fight this is the hardest five seconds now some people is asking who how do you adjust this okay circle is always on dps 100 in this setup if one of the dps goes outside you can be sure that that dps will 100 get a circle now if you stay close like this then it will be random so if you are doomed and you are a melee if you stand like where my standing leader is standing far you will get circle 100% because of how the mechanic works and also because circle can only go on doom if you are doom and you are dps you will 100% get it in this situation if there's three dps then whoever is the furthest will be the one that get it i'm not sure whether you can bait two circle i don't think you can you can only bait one circle in phase one you can't in this phase maybe you can but it's not about that it's about how to eliminate this mechanic is about how you eliminate adjustments rather than two person adjusting three way one person fixed one person adjust one way which is what i do so you notice i notice that it's him i let him get circle i either get triangle or i get square and of course and of course triangle is always one doom one no doom so obviously one triangle is fixed to this position so this guy obviously have to adjust for me. if you are non-doom and you get a triangle you are never gonna go to a puddle it's fixed okay how do you bait x x is semi baitable X is not fully baitable. X always goes on a tank or a healer. One of them, not both of them, one of them. See, one of the tank got X. X also always go on a non-doom puddle. So if you're a non-doom tank, or a healer, you can bait the X. Triangle and square is the, um, it's still like a discussion amongst ourselves that we think that is a way, but we don't see it, but we don't care for it. Circle and X is baitable, 100%. One circle is 100% baitable. One X is 100% baitable. You can't bait both X. You can't bait both circle. One of the circle is baitable, one of the X is baitable. This fight so far has so much mechanic up to this point. There's so much at stake, man. I will say this is the most tiring 9 mini mark. Up to this point, this is the most busy 9 mini you ever done in every ultimate. <sighs>
I like I like this mechanic. I like this mechanic. I, I think I think I think I think this is this, this is well done. Okay, no? Very well done. Oh oh, bring a dancer. Dancer make this meteor so much easier. To bring a dancer. We waste a lot of time on the meteors because we don't have enough damage. When I say we don't have damage, I'm not saying that we don't have damage to do it properly. We can do it properly. But when you get that clean the first couple of times, you want more damage that you don't have to think about. You want free damage that, oh shit, we did it, we did it, let's go. And then in the panic of times, you press the wrong button. In the panic of times, you guys hit the same target. In the panic of time, you didn't AOE. In the panic of time, you didn't use your strongest potency. You just press button on the tower, but you didn't press the right button or you, or you over damage the wrong one you didn't you didn't spread the damage evenly if you have a dancer in their face you will never fuck up their face literally you you get so much free damage you know